morning. My name is Tyler Adamson. Me and my partner Rachel, who is currently operating the PowerPoint presentation, are here to talk to you today about Asian carp and their potential invasion within the North American Great Lakes. Asian carp is a term used to generalize uh, multiple species of carp originating from Eastern Asia but with established breeding populations within North America. The main carp species of focus within this category include Silver carp, big head carp, grass carp, and black carp. Silver carp and big head carp being the main species of concern. Asian carp are considered one of the 55 invasive freshwater species within Canada. They are also considered one of the worst 100 invasive species by the World Conservation Union. In Ontario, it is illegal to be in possession of live Asian carp, and there are fines and jail time possible for being in possession. Uh, one of the main species of concern, as it is of large size and is capable of rapid reproduction rates, is the silver carp. It has the ability to project themselves three meters out of the water in response to potential threats like vibrations in the water caused by boats. Uh, the native range extends as far north as 54 degrees, uh, sorry, the 54th parallel. It is capable of traveling up to 64 kilometers a day under ideal conditions with lack of obstacles and uh, stable currents. The big head carp. It is the other species of great concern, capable of consuming up to 50% of its body weight daily, capable of growing up to a meter in span. Native range extends as far north as the 47th parallel. It is a very successful invasive predator, easily able to outcompete native fish species by its consumption of algae and phytoplankton. It is also capable of traveling up to 64 kilometers a day. Uh, these are just two examples of the carp of main concern. Big head carp are characterized by their eyes are slightly below their mouth. Their head is slightly a blackish tinge and their body is like a silvery blackish splotchy pattern. The silver carp again have eyes below their mouth, more of a greenish head, and characterized by a greenish silverish body with a green uh, with greenish fins. The grass carp. That is a herbivorous fish which uh, consumes phytoplankton and algal matter. Uh, it was imported to North America for macrophyte governance within fish farm facilities. They are known to destroy habitats by uprooting aquatic vegetation in order to feed, therefore reduces water quality for native fish species. And this fish is characterized by its eyes actually in line with its mouth and it has more of a scaly appearance, kind of like a, kind of like a snake would uh, have. And it's uh, the spacing between its dorsal fin and its rear fin are another uh, key identifying feature. Uh, black carp introduced to the southern United States in an effort to by fish farms to control parasitic mollusk populations within their farming complexes. Uh, they aren't established in the Mississippi River Basin. Black carp are contained within aquaculture ponds in Arkansas and Mississippi. <laughs> Asian carp were first introduced to North America in the 1960s and 70s by fish farmers and government agencies in the southern United States. This was done in an effort to control levels of aquatic plants, mullets, and other troublesome organisms. In the early 1990s, the carp escaped from the fish farms during period periodic events of flooding. Introduction to the Asian carp. Uh, enough escape to establish successful breeding populations. They are capable of breeding multiple times a year. Therefore, they have spread exponentially throughout the tributaries of the Mississippi and Illinois river systems. They now account for 90% of the biomass in some lengths of the Mississippi and Illinois river systems. And I'm going to let Rachel Walker take over from here. Thank you. So, the potential of Asian carp occupation of the Great Lakes. The native range of the big head carp extends as far north as the 47th parallel. This corresponds to the latitude of Lake Superior. 
Uh, the native range of the silver carp extends far north, as far north as the 54th parallel, and this corresponds to the latitude of the southern basin of Hudson Bay. Uh, continue. <laughs> Considerable amount of potential food sources and spawning beds within the Great Lakes Basin. Uh, this is due to the familiar northerly range of the Asian carp species, as well as the familiar ecology of the Great Lakes. Uh, the cool, temperate waters found near the shores of the Great Lakes are ideal habitats for many of the species within the Asian carp category. Uh, potential commercial fishing impact. In 2008, there was over 500 active commercial fishing licenses in Ontario. A total economic contribution of between 180 The commercial aquaculture industry contributes approximately $65 million annually to Ontario's economy. Uh, sought after commercial fish species include yellow perch, whitefish, and lake herring. Preventative measures. So there, there are electrified barriers at the Chicago Sanitary and Ship Canal, and they are in place to hinder the advancement of aquatic invasive species between the Great, uh, the great Lakes and the Mississippi. Uh, the disadvantages of this preventative measure include periodic maintenance and potential power disruption slash um, This is useless during times of flooding when temporary connections may be made between the Great Lakes and the Mississippi River Basin. Prevent preventative measures continue. So rotenone is a chemical that affects all gill-breathing organisms by, uh, by inhibiting the use of oxygen, although vulnerability to the poison varies among species. So, rotenone is used in emergency measures to prevent carp from migrating to Lake Michigan when the electrified barriers are in need of maintenance. Um, it was approved by the EPA in 2007, and the byproducts include carbon dioxide and water. Therefore, there is no accumulation in water, plant, soil, or surviving organisms. Uh, eDNA testing. Environmental DNA or eDNA is used as an early detection tool of the invasive species. Each fish releases shed DNA into its surrounding environment. And the process of detection includes um, water samples are taken and then filtered. And then the short fragments of DNA are extracted and amplified for identification purposes. Um, They've actually found shed DNA of the Asian carp past the electronic barrier, so they don't know if it's actually in the Great Lakes yet or if it's just in that small area. Um, Ontario's Invasive Species Awareness Program has been in operation since 1992, and it increases public awareness of potential threats associated with invasive species. In 2005, the Ontario government banned the possession of several live Asian carp species as well as the trade of these species, and hefty fines and possible jail time service deterrents. Thank you for watching. And this is just where we got our uh, images from. Uh, we hope you enjoyed the presentation, Jeremy. Thank you for allowing us the opportunity to make this presentation for you, and hope you enjoyed us being in your class this year. <laughs>